hello and welcome back. It is officially April 1st. This is not a joke. We are going to go through my many reads of March. I kind of hate this makeup today. Let's see if I can fix it. Um, the weather sucks. I want to be doing a specific photo shoot for that I need to do out of doors and I can't because it's raining. So anywho, we are going to go through all the books I read in March. So are you ready? There are a lot of them. So in March, I read 26 books, which I am frankly shocked by because I have so many huge books in here and I legitimately thought that I would not get through any. So we're going to start right at the top of the list. I've read a bunch of graphic novels, a lot of things off of NetGalley. It has done nothing to my NetGalley score. I feel like my NetGalley score is always going to be what it is, and that's that's that. But I've got my handy-dandy book journal. I've got my list for ease of reference, and we're going to just, we're just, we're just going to hop into it. I guess we'll go through a bunch of the graphic novels that I read this month, including just for fun, I read Gudetama, Mindfulness for the Lazy, and you can hear Hemi licking himself behind the camera, and I am sorry for that, but it was this really cute little graphic novel um, starring Gudetama, where he teaches people how to just sort of relax a little bit. Like it's, you know, made for people to learn how to cope and with just life and stress and how to be in the moment and it was really adorable and I flipping love Gudetama because I'm a lazy egg, he's a lazy egg, we'll be lazy eggs together. It's three stars, I mean it's, it is what it is but it's super cute and I really loved it. It made me like happy. The next thing I read was White All Around which is another graphic novel that is, talks about this school in Connecticut that was like the first school to um, allow like for for I think it was just predominantly black women like so for for black girls to go to school and it was the story of the school and then at the very end there was a lot of historical notes about the people like the lady who ran the school the kids that graduated from that school the things that they did in their lives after school and it was just it was really well done. The art was beautiful. The story was moving. I didn't even know this place exists and it's not far from my house. So I feel like I need to go visit this school and we can go visit things because I want to see it. That's one of my favorite things to do is to go to old historical sites because I'm a dork and really loved it. And, and I'm really glad that I read it. Um, I'm not sure when it comes out or if it's out yet, but five stars absolutely loved it. I read another graphic novel called Bronte that's about the Bronte sisters and sort of about their home. It was very short. It's all in black and white. White. It's very dark, which is really like I, I feel like it's it's appropriate for the Bronte sisters and for the the dark gothic like on the moors stories that they gave the world. Um, and it was just it was a lovely lovely little read to read in between all of these like big chunky books that I was reading, particularly in the beginning half of the month. March feels like it was a really long month and I don't know why, but I got a lot done. I don't know how, but I did. Um, but I give that four stars. I really enjoyed it. I think it was a great surface level um, introduction to the Bronte sisters and could get, uh, especially a young child, um, high school student who is maybe reading one of their books into the backstory of who these people are and why their writing though now may seem out of touch was actually in incredibly important and um not the norm especially for women unmarried women of the time for them to be putting these things in writing and and all that like they were far far what's the phrase I'm looking for they were ahead of their time um in terms of writers and uh yeah so the other thing that I read if I can find it in here the other thing that I read like we're just gonna go through this list the next thing on this list is the Conductors, which came in my Unplugged box, and I also had an arc of it. I really enjoyed this book. It is a mystery set post-Civil War in Pennsylvania, and you have two timelines, and you go back to the plantation where this girl and her sister um, are 
and then you go to the future where this girl and her, this other, the, you know, are the main character and her husband are, and they have magical powers. White people have magical powers. There are some people that just have magical powers. And this husband and wife team basically solve crimes that in the black community in Philadelphia, I think they're in Philadelphia, in Philadelphia, where, which, you know, the, the regular old white cops would never look into. And so this is just a really interesting mystery. It's a really interesting um, historical mystery. And I really hope that we get to see Benji and Hetty again so that they can solve more mysteries because I really enjoy them as a couple. I want to learn more about their magic system. It's a very uh, soft magic system, but, and it involves like constellations and all kinds of stuff and, like wards, it, but it was really, really lovely. Like I really enjoyed it. Um, I like, I had no complaints. Uh, four stars. It was great. I read somewhere in this stack is my arc of House Apollo, which you guys have heard me talk about House Apollo like a bajillion times. If you follow me on Instagram, this is a dark gothic novel YA that's coming out next month. It's coming uh, this month. It's coming out on the sixth, so this will probably be out right before. Um, I've been working with Penguin Teen on all kinds of stuff for the marketing, which has been really fun because I. I this is, I just feel like I really am like a book influencer or something, but I really loved this book. I thought it was um, gripping, like I was spellbound through the whole thing. It's a little bit predictable, but in a way that didn't make me unhappy. Like, like I kind of knew the twists, but not exactly. And I was really interested to see if she was going to get there like that, how she was going to get there like that, and if it was going to be any like tweak, and the tweaks are great, and it's it's like question mark are is there gonna be another book i don't know it's it's really good so i i, I feel like i've talked about it enough uh, on my other platforms but essentially there are these three girls that went missing for a month when they were younger and when they came back they were different and there's just something very strange about them strange things happen around them there's a lot of mystery and one day when they're older the eldest goes missing and the other two have to try to find her and all these secrets get unraveled and it is just if you like gothic novels if you want to be spooked like seriously 15 year old me would have been terrified but i'm 30 now i i'm older than that i'm almost 40 but it takes more to scare me but i really i really 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 loved this um that was four stars i believe i also was sent this book Alex Six by Vince Kaplan. I did a whole feature on this for um, the last Saturday of the month. I'm starting to highlight indie authors. He reached out to me and asked if I wanted to read this. Um, he described it as like a like a messed up thriller. I can't remember his exact words. It's in my post, but I was like, yes, I'm looking for the thriller that's going to f me up. Like, give me the thriller that's going to f me up. Loved it. The language is a little bro -y. It's his first published novel that I'm aware of. And, but like our main character, he is a little bro -y. But it's definitely like Boiling Bunnies, Fatal Attraction meets Verity, really messed up. If you do not like gritty, mildly offensive, just insane thrillers, don't read this. This is not for your like cozy mystery. I like a little twisty thriller reader this is for somebody who who wants just like dark gritty messed up if you couldn't read verity you can't read this and this is darker than verity but i loved it four stars i also finally got to a little late but i got to the last call which celadon sent me an arc of a while back and it just i i got behind um uh this is about this killer that was stalking manhattan and the gay clubs in the 90s and 80s at like you know during the AIDS crisis and it's not just a, a story about that murderer who doesn't really ever get talked about the last call killer isn't somebody that like we hear about um which is a lot of the reason why the author wrote this story because he found it really fascinating that this existed but it also talks about you know the rights of homosexuals especially in New York he contrasts it with San Francisco a bunch um because it was, you know, the difference between those two cultures and it just how, you know, particularly gay men, because um, they stalked gay men, like gay clubs.
but then killed all men, but particularly how gay men sort of survived the living in with all this hate and how like there was this whole oh gosh what's it called did I write it down oh, the gay panic defense that people would get off for, if they like lashed out and like killed somebody because they and the, the person was gay they could call this like gay panic defense where it was like oh somehow your outrage and hate for and fear of this gay person made it justified that you killed them. Like literally this existed. This is something that people got off from crimes for. There are people probably walking around today that have seriously maimed somebody and they got off on that defense. It, I mean, if this was provocative, it was anger inducing. It's a must read for anybody who is a supporter of LGBT rights, um, LGBTQ plus, if you are not an asshole, you should read this book. Five stars. I don't really rate my, my nonfictions, but read it. The audio is on Scribd. Go to your library. I don't care. It's fantastic. Um, I buddy read The Arrangement with two of my friends, Naomi and April. And I we really loved this book. I gave this four stars. I felt like it was... How do I want to describe this? It, I mean, it's it's about a call girl. It's, it's a thriller. She's not a call girl. It's about a girl who is struggling. Like she's sort of estranged from her family. She's got, she's in the city. She's at art school. She's trying to make it through life. She has no money. She be, stumbles upon this fellow classmate who happens to be living in this lavish lifestyle. And she realizes that she does it. She assumes she comes from money. She does it. And she sort of stumbles into the world of sugar babies not a crawl girl, sugar babies. And she ends up in this rather obsessive relationship with this man. The man is a total piece of hot garbage. His wife is not much better. The story unfolds, tragic events occur. I loved it. We could not stop reading it. I believe I gave it four stars because I felt like part of me wanted a different ending for our main character. I feel like she kind of got the shit under the stick and I didn't like the wife, but we loved this book. Ever, I read it. Loved it. Just gonna do these all together. Um, all together now. Um, I read Shadow and Bone Trilogy, and I believe I gave it Shadow and Bone three stars, Siege and Rising and Ri Ruin, and so Siege and Storm and Ruin and Rising four stars. I love this, this trilogy. I felt like, especially in the beginning, the I shouldn't like it this much because it is a very, it's much more younger YA than I typically like, especially in the beginning, but it gets a little bit more mature as she goes along. Um, but I really, really, really enjoyed it. I understand the fandom. I mean, I love Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom, but that's a lot more mature. This, I just, I just never really got into because it's younger, but I really love this and I'm glad that I read them and I'm, I'm ready for the show to come out. The show looks amazing. And I also want the whole series in this cover, if I can get it in hardback. I love these editions. I'm less of a fan of these editions. But I got this for a dollar, I got this for a dollar, and I had to buy this full price. So it's pretty damn good, if you ask me. I, how, how, did, how did I read all these things? I don't... I feel like maybe I should talk to my boyfriend more, but then I won't read as much. I finished Game of Thrones. It was very good. Four stars. It's very long. It's very detailed. I like the audiobook. It it's definitely better than the show. It held my attention more. It is long as balls, and how long are balls? It's just long. Um, I enjoyed it. I'm glad we're reading it. I will do book two this month. Hopefully, I'll finish it this month. I don't know. It's even longer. It was good. I mean, it's Game of Thrones. Everybody knows the story. I don't need to spend much time on it. I read an ebook called Set to Music, which was a really sweet um, romance where you have like a doctor who ends up meeting a rock star and they, she ends up being on tour with them and it's like a whole thing. And it was cute. Um, it was a little bit more mature in the sense that the characters were more grown up than I think often you see in romances they both had their shit together which I like to see I hate I don't hate but 
I don't always want to see like a meek female who meets a man and yada yada. Like there's a place for that, but it's nice sometimes to just see like people that are just well-established human beings in their own lives and then they meet and they have to go through things that like you or I might go through. Um, she has to sort of choose, you know, the, the whole tension is really like choosing between giving up her career for this man or not having this man and sticking to her career as a doctor. And she's got, there's some uh, mixing of cultural stuff. Uh, her, she's Iranian, I believe. I might be wrong. Is she Iranian? I feel like she's Iranian. I might be very wrong. And he is, he's, um... Hispanic, I can't remember where he's from, um, but you have two different cultures and they're kind of clashing. I know that her mom has a lot of, like, her mom's very wary of, of the guy and there's just tension there between family dynamics and it's just really, really, really well done. I enjoyed it. It was a good, cozy little romance, three stars. It was good. It was, I have nothing really too terrible to say about it. However, <laughs> the next ebook I read was Night's, Nightshade's Bite which is the second or the third in a, I think it's the second in a set of books. It's a sequel in a set of books, because I, I don't wanna call it a series, because it says specifically that you can read these as standalones. They are standalones in like a universe. I do not understand half of what was going on, so don't tell me it's a standalone, because I feel like I should have read the first book. Second of all, the plot made no sense. Like she couldn't, it's like a vamp and a werewolf getting together. There's this whole like war between the vamps and the werewolves. This like the lady vamp is actually like a, she's running like a uh, resistance group to try to like stop the war. And like this vamp, the werewolf she falls in love with is actually the super powerful werewolf, like King and like whatever, who's been like in hiding or something. Like, you know, standard stuff. And, but like, there's all these weird things. Like she can't, be with him because if she's so turned on that she bites him, his blood's gonna kill her. But like her cousin is married to a werewolf. So like, does she just like not feel compelled to bite him? Like there's so many plot holes. It was so awful. I don't know why I gave it two stars. There were only like two sex scenes too. And if like you see the cover, like look at the cover. If you see that naked of a man on a cover, I expect smut, good smut, lots of smut. So I don't, honestly, I think I might just take it down to one. I don't know. I just, I really did not like this. I did not like it at all. Uh, the other, we're just going to move on from that because I really didn't like that one. The other uh, baba graphic novel, that's the word I'm looking for, that I read is called My Body in Pieces. And this book was beautiful. I'll try to insert like one or two of the big illustrations in it. It it's gorgeous. It's all like sketches, like line sketches, like charcoal sketches. And the story is, will be triggering. Like there's definitely trigger warnings for people with um, like body dysmorphia um, and eating disorders, but it's also a good story for people with body dysmorphia and eating disorders who are probably like on the side of recovery, um, who are capable of self-reflection because it is a beautiful story about Beautiful, it's a beautifully drawn story about this girl struggling to come to terms with her body and how much she hates her body and how depressed and isolating she feels, it feels to be in her body and the things that people say around her. And it's just, it's such like a raw look at the psychological effects of body dysmorphia. And I, it really hit home, home with me is that something that I've had a problem with like as long as I can remember and I identified so much with this character in so many different ways and it was just visually it was stunning and the story was just it was it was perfect I absolutely loved it um I don't know why I only gave it four stars but it was I don't know what the other star is for but I don't know, it was beautiful. It's a translated work too, it was gorgeous. Uh, I highly, highly recommend it to anybody who feels like they can read that story. I understand there's a lot of people that probably can't. You have to be like in the right space with your own mental health, but I really enjoyed it. We're gonna quickly gloss over 
the last night at the Telegraph Club, which was our TBR lowdown main pick for the month. Absolutely loved it. There's a whole live stream where we talk about it. And I did not do a reading vlog for this one because it was just short and I did not, I just didn't. Um, but I gave it four stars. You can see our, I'll link it up in the corners somewhere, the live if you want to watch the live show of us talking about it. But this was phenomenal. This is about, it's set in the 50s in Chinatown in San Francisco. Um, the, the author does a really good job of integrating the history and the culture without over explaining it to you uh, in a way that takes you out of the story. It, it's, Melinda Lou just does like, it, it's, it's wonderfully done. Um, and I want to know more. That's one of the things we were talking about on the live show is how much we want to know more about what happens to our main characters here. We want to see Kat and Lily in their next iteration. We want to know more about the side characters, especially Tommy. Like I want to know more about Tommy's backstory. There's so much more that I want to know here. I also want a recipe book because the food in this book is mouthwatering. Like I was hungry the entire time and I, I need her to make a cookbook. <sighs> I'm tired already. Okay, I finally, finally, finally read Throne of Glass. I enjoyed it. I think it's messy, um, but it is the first book. So I will give it a slight like um, pass. I gave it three stars. I just felt like it was messy. I definitely saw the Cinderella retelling piece. Um, I feel like Selena's a very messy assassin. Like she has zero impulse control. And from what I understand, she never learns any impulse control. But I really enjoy that they actually talked about what it's like to be an assassin and have your period. Cause nobody talks about that ever. So that was, that makes me happy. Um, but yeah, no, I'll keep going on with the, with the series and we'll see how that goes. I've heard it's quite a ride. Uh, I kind of always feel like with Sarah J Mass that I never expect the next book to be the book that I love. And if I go in with low expectations, I end up loving something because her writing is just, her it, her books are just so like up and down for me. Um, but I keep going back because when I love them, I love them. And we're gonna skip a book for a second because I reread Crescent City. It's still five stars. I did a whole reading vlog on this last year. I still cried at La Hava. Hunt is my man. Just read the reading book if you want. I feel like everybody knows what this book is by now, but like I, yeah, still love this. Still five stars. It's amazing. Read it. I need book two. We also buddy read Honey Girl, and I'm kind of mad that this wasn't a TBR Lowdown pick too. Like we can only pick so many books for TBR Lowdown, but like I really wanted to discuss this with everybody because this book is so good. Five stars. It is messy 20 year olds figuring out their lives or our main girl, main character is figuring out her life. She is lost and she's 20 in her 20s and she feels like she's supposed to be doing certain things because that's what her dad wants to her do. She's got this very strict military dad and she's supposed to have this plan and her plan's falling apart and she just gets drunk and marries this girl in Las Vegas and this girl is phenomenal. Her partner is like the most, what their love story is wonderful. Um, uh, the journey is heartbreaking and uh, it's just, I cried, my heart swelled, I, I, all the feels, like all the feels, just read this dang book now. The bonus book for TBR Lowdown was A Gentleman's Murder, which, I don't know why I'm stomping so much, A Gentleman's Murder. This is, if you like, like classic mysteries, like Dorothy Sayers, uh, Agatha Christie, if you like things set post-World War One, if you like things set in England, if you like things that are writing that creates an immersive world where you feel like you're walking the street next to the character, read this book. I am so excited that he's coming out with a second one. I don't know when it's coming out. And this ends where you think, I think, I think the next book is a, is a continuation in a series and that our main character is going to go solve another crime, but I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen, but 
this deals with so many things, particularly um, class structure in the UK, what it was like for men after the war, after World War I, how did they deal with PTSD, how did that, how do you be normal after being stuck in the mud getting slaughtered um, and watching your friends die? And it was just, it was so good. Um, it also deals with race relations between the Chinese and the British. Our main character is half Chinese and he's also like a founding member of this gentleman's club in the in London for ex-servicemen um, like his family is he's very well to do but he's half Chinese so he's like kind of in and kind of out and it's just it's brilliant like his sister I feel like gets more accepted into society because she's like she passes a little bit more white than he does he gets less accepted into society it's there the characters were so vivid it was such a good book. I absolutely adored this. Five stars. And I just hope he keeps writing. I think the author is like, what is he? He's He works, he studied architecture at McGill University. But I feel like he's like some sort of professor or something. Like he's like super smart. Like this could only come from the brain of a super smart person. Neighbor. I listened to a book called City of Thieves, because I saw it on, is it Paper, Paperback Dreams? Is that cat? On her channel. She was going through these books that she read, and it just sounded really interesting because it's set during the Siege of Leningrad, which is a setting that I actually really enjoy, which I was first introduced to when I read The Bronze Horseman, which is a romance trilogy that literally everybody needs to read, but I only know one, like two people that have read it. Anyway. And because the Siege of Leningrad is a really fascinating thing. They don't teach you enough in school. Um, just the desperation of these people and the toughness of the Russian people to survive against all odds and the things that they did. And essentially this story is you've got these two unlikely characters who get arrested. One is a young Jewish boy. The other is a soldier um who's arrested for desertion though it's it's uncertain if he really deserted or if he's just because he's kind of like a fun loving guy who can't stop having sex the, the the sex addict artist he is the um russell brand of the book and but they get this chance to get out of prison and not die if they can find 12 eggs for this party member's daughter's wedding so they have like seven days or something to find 12 eggs so they can make a birthday cake, which is very hard to find during the Siege of Leningrad. And these two go off on this insane journey through, through the streets of Leningrad, out into the countryside. And through their journey, you get to see so much of what that life was like. There were times when I was driving in the car and I literally like, couldn't breathe because the things that were happening were so horrific and I know that they're real which makes it worse and it's just it was this is not a book for the faint of heart or the squeamish but for anybody who enjoys history for anybody who enjoys Russian literature anybody who just enjoys a masterful tale this book is so good five stars I need to get this book in like a physical copy because I, I kind of hate that I don't have it to like hold. It's so good. Um, come down for a little bit. Uh, I read Enchantment of Ravens. Uh, there is really nothing I, I can say other than I just particularly enjoy Margaret Rogerson's writing. I find her very cathartic. I listen to most of this while going on a long walk, which is the perfect setting for reading a story where the characters were all going through a journey through the woods and I'm walking through the woods and it was lovely. Is it great? Is it amazing? No. Is the plot filled with lots of issues? Sure. Um, why are there goat sisters but we never really do anything with them? You throw goat sisters in and we don't really do anything with them. We have a couple comedic scenes and that's it. Anyway, three stars. It was fine. I feel like Sorcery of Thorns was way better but I enjoyed it. I'm not mad that I read it. We are at 31 minutes. This, I read too many books. Anyway, 
We are so close. Dip on. Uh, I already posted about this on Instagram, so I'll try to make it short, but I read She's Too Pretty to Burn, which came out at the end of March. And it is the story, it is a thriller with like kind of a, a love triangle, but not necessarily a romantic love triangle. It is a story about finding love, about being a teenager, about found family, about murder, about ecological, like, like eco-terrorism. It is guerrilla art. I mean, it, it is just so good. It is such a good book. I, 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 I loved it. I mean, I gave it four stars. It was, the cover is beautiful. It's great. I mean, I think that, I don't know. It's just good. You should read it. Go read it. Just enough. I've been talking for, I'm going to talk, this is going to be like a 40 minute video for me to wrap up March. So I'm going to shut up. Um, I, I'm not going to go too much into this. I severely disliked Once Upon a River. Uh, I very much enjoyed the audiobook. I gave this two stars mainly because I gave one for Juliet Stevens and her beautiful narration of the story and one for the author's attempt at writing it. Um, I feel like I get where she was trying to go with this dreamlike magical exploration of the stories that we tell ourselves. Um, to handle things in our life like grief and uh, trauma and all kinds of stuff like that like the bad things how we the stories we tell ourselves and how they wind like a river I don't it was just I don't like it it was so try hard I didn't like it I know lots of people, when I posted about it on Instagram, lots of people were like, I love that book. And I'm like, but I hate it. <clears throat> I only have two more to talk about. I read Covet. Which I gave four stars. I love Covet. I, I love this series. It is absolutely, like, every negative thing that somebody will say about this, Lacey, um, is true. It's true. But. I don't care because I absolutely just love it. I love Hudson. I love the outrageous, outlandish, over the topness of the story. I love how sometimes it doesn't even make any sense. Like, I don't know what it is. It's just a ride. It gives me joy. It was a perfect way to get over this garbage. Like, I loved it. I, I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. Four stars. I need the next book. We're about to go to war and I need to see what my girl, the gargoyle, does. Is it September yet? Because I think court comes out in September. I'm ready. I'm ready now. And the last book I read is Speak, which I also have the graphic novel for, and I need to read that. I might read that this month. But this is from 1999, and I don't know why I've never read it. And I absolutely love this. I gave this five stars. I read this up until the wee hours of last night, and so I could get it in for March. It's not very big, but I just love it. It deals with, it follows our main character, Melinda. She's going into high school, which is already a huge change. She's absolutely depressed because everybody hates her. She called the cops at this party and it busted this party and someone got arrested and like everything was all, she's like this, everyone shits on her. And the reality is that she called the cops because she got raped and then she got scared and she ran away. And she never even reported it. And she's absolutely traumatized from this experience. And she just continues to be traumatized because she has nobody, she tells nobody, she has nobody to confide in. She feels just broken and she's lost and she has no friends. And she's just, it's so sad, but she claws her way back through, honestly, through art and through the support of her art teacher and a friend that she starts to make through art and, and not like a good friend, but you know, finding somebody who doesn't just outwardly treat her like garbage. And it's just, and then finally people validating her experience and her, she finds her voice again. And it's just so dang good. The only thing that makes me upset and it's because in 2021, do not use the R word to describe people in 1999. These teenagers would say that, but we don't say that here. 
Jesus is calling me as I'm doing this anyway. So that was all 26 books I read this month. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you've made it this far, leave down below April Fools and then I'll be able to say hello. And I really appreciate you being here. Please remember to like and subscribe. We are getting so close to 500, which means we're halfway to my goal for the year, which is to get to a thousand. And I'm just, I'm loving making things for you. I'm hoping I can get back out and vlog, but I've just been so like stuck in this house and there's nothing to vlog. And so it's a lot of sit down videos, which are fun, but not as fun, I think, as, as making vlogs. But thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video, whatever that may be, because it's my channel and I can do whatever I want. Ciao. So just sit with me, talking to the night and to the morning, building.